Governor State University's Faculty and Staff Union, UPI, have been negotiating fair contracts for nine months with GSU's administration. Through the nine months of negotiation and mediation, very little progress has been made at the bargaining table, which led to the union to create a ballot for GSU UPI members to cast a vote for an authorized strike. After a week-long ballot, 97% of voters were in favor of a strike. The union immediately filed a 10-day intent to strike paperwork with the Illinois Educational Labor Relations Board, meaning the soonest the group could strike would be April 10. Ahead of a crucial negotiation meeting on April 6, Union President Mike Hart sat down for an exclusive interview. So why is it important for you and the union to fight for this fair contract? Well, it, you know, we're fighting for the future of this school, and that goes unsaid a lot. The faculty, the staff, you know, in, in our local, we have the advisors uh, and many uh, people in admissions, registrar's office, things like that. And we're assets to this university, uh, the human assets. And they, the school needs to invest in those human assets. And not just our local, I mean, the, the people that clean and the people that deliver packages and the people that are uh, the security everyone here is an asset to this university and works with students to one degree or another we're why they come here we're why they stay we're why they succeed and move on and they have just never fully invested in that asset GSU TV requested an interview with Governor State University's president, Dr. Cheryl Green, but received no response. On Thursday, April 6, faculty and student members rallied together for fair contracts ahead of a crucial negotiation. Students who made protest signs and shirts inside of the G atrium were ushered away towards the outside region of campus where faculty and union members later joined them. Unfortunately, even with the large gathering of GSU's community, the April 6 negotiation came to an end without a deal and led to the commencement of the strike on April 11th, 2023. On the first day of the strike, Governor State University's staff and faculty were joined by members of Chicago State, Eastern Illinois, in a rally of an estimated 200 individuals. In the hour-long rally, professionals and students made their voices heard by stressing the need for change and supporting the union's stance on fair contracts. It's a negotiating table that has to expressly say justice and equity. Yeah. Yeah. It has to say we and us. When you go to the table, you take your students to the table. When you go to the table, you take your household to the table. When you go to the table, you take your neighborhood to the table. When you go to the table, you take yeah. racial justice yeah. to the table. When you go to help support the teachers in getting what they rightfully deserve. And that's a fair pay, something that they still see, that they still seem to struggle to want to give them, even though they're literally the ones who make everything run in the school and literally nothing would work if they weren't here. So it doesn't make sense to me that teachers are struggling paycheck to paycheck when they're the ones who teach the future, the uh, future career people who are just like the administration who aren't paying. On the third day of the faculty and staff strike for fair contracts, we asked GSC professors Gretchen Jankowski and Eddie Gamboa about how their third day on the picket lines were going. I mean, it's a little depressing. I wish that I wasn't out here. I'd rather be in my classroom teaching my students, but I also feel like I need to, I need fair pay. Yeah, uh, they want us to think that we have to choose between the education of our students and taking care of ourselves and our families, and that is a false choice the administration is giving us. I know that the students are with us, and I know the faculty are with the students, and I know that the communities are with us, and I appreciate it more than I can say. After a seven-day strike that had faculty and staff members in the streets picketing, and away from its students, GSU President Dr. Cheryl Green announced on Monday, April 18th, 2023, via email, that a tentative agreement was reached between Local 4100 and GSU's administration 
that accomplished the goals of both parties. This deal resulted in the suspension of the strike and the return of faculty and staff to GSU's campus. Following Monday's conclusion, we sat down with Union President Mike Hart for an interview. Monday. Monday was an incredibly taxing day. Um, we went in, but it was, it's not a normal negotiation. Most negotiations work slowly through time. People meet when we can, and it's herding cats. So once every couple of weeks, we can all get together. Um, but they, it all boils down to like one or two particularly hard days. Mm -hmm. And Monday was that, that day. You know, some things started moving. Um, on their side and on our side. And a lot of that consists of outside the door uh, called sidebar talks mm -hmm. with uh, what it was me and the labor attorney representing GSU. And uh, kind of we make, instead of pr uh, formal proposals, you make what's called a supposal. Suppose we did something like this. Mm -hmm. Suppose we, it's a lot, it turns into a lot of outside the box thinking to try and come to an agreement. And that's any any contract usually getting to the end, especially with with money. Um, we had agreed on everything, but really, like literally every single thing, every topic we had on the table, we had come to terms on, except for money. So um, it was just a long day, really. But uh, and, and specifically because we had a, a strike happening. Normally a contract ends and it's a long day, but it's like, hey, we came to an agreement and you just go home and you, everybody's normal. This time uh, we had to talk about return to work agreements and how that was going, how we were going to come back on campus. So uh, that was added into the mix with everything. So long day, yeah, but a, a very rewarding day. This is Jason Gonzalez reporting for GSU TV. Hi, and welcome to GSU TV. Today, the GSU Anime and Gaming Club hosts a Battle Royale gaming tournament in the Hall of Honors from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. To participate, you have to donate some items to an event. Elaine Green, the Vice President, has more information about the event and what the donations are for. So today's event is called, um, I guess, Fight of the Jaguars. It's a fighting game tournament where we're allowing students to come in, participate, um, and join different tournaments. The main two games we have are uh, Super Smash Bros. and uh, Skullgirls, but a lot of other members also brought their own consoles and games of different uh, fighting games and stuff so that people can also play those games too. Um, the main thing is that in order to join the tournament, you have to donate a couple items. A lot of the items we're donating is, are going to be going to the YWCA. So we mainly ask for items like uh, deodorant, soap, uh, tampons, pads, because it is a woman's um, shelter and stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's kind of like the main thing we're having today. Alongside the tournament was food for the event, like various sodas, chips, and two different types of cheeseburgers. The tournament winner would have received an Easter gift basket as a prize. If you want to see more events like these, please check out your school email for upcoming events. Thank you for watching. This is Alex Gray reporting for GSU TV. You're player four. Player five is me. Who's player six? You're player six? Yep. Yeah. Okay, I'm just trying to get... Hi, and welcome to GSU TV. Today, Governor State University hosts their first Friday casino theme night in the Hall of Governors from 3 to 6 p.m. The event was put on by the administrative and finance team. There was a crabs table, a poker table, a blackjack table, and roulette. They also had other games like Giant Jenga and Connect Four. To play the games, you had to purchase a raffle ticket and receive $500 in poker chips to play. In Ingramson Hall, they had two tournaments, an Uno tournament and a Spades tournament. For our people to participate. Alongside the tournament was food for the participants of the event. They had some cheeses, crackers for snacks. The main course was meatballs and a variety of cheeseburgers and other dishes. Back in the Hall of Governors, they had various desserts and a bar for people who were over the age of 21 to enjoy. Casino theme night also provided prizes for anyone who had bought a raffle ticket. Once your raffle ticket was called, you got to pick your prize from the table. They also provided a photo booth machine to anyone interested in taking pictures with their friends. 
If you want to see more events like these, please check out your school email for upcoming events. Thank you for watching. This is Alex Gray reporting for GSU TV. Hi, and welcome to GSU TV. Today, we interview two undergrad students who are going to graduate from Governor State University's Media Studies program in May. We asked Lila Kozolinski and Alexander Gray what their plans are after graduating. My plans after I graduate are hopefully start finding a job and work said job. And if not, then probably go back to school, see what I can improve on, learn new things, and try again. My plans after graduation are to find a job in uh, video production or anything revolving uh, video. And I'm going to go pursue my master's in filmmaking. I've chosen three schools, uh, DePaul, University of Illinois, and Governor State, to be one of the schools to be uh, my master's in. We also asked them, what kind of jobs are they looking for? Mostly cinematography or videography work, something with cameras, because I spent a lot of time doing that here but I'm also looking at graphic art jobs because I do have an associate in arts from my previous college and I do like drawing and I I'm really good at Photoshop and Illustrator and all those apps they're really fun to play with so I'm looking for video jobs anything that involves video editing anything that's gonna give me the foot my foot into the industry of like filmmaking or like at media, I just want to get around there because I feel like I'm, I'm really good at it. We asked them, what's their favorite thing about the media studies program? My favorite thing to do for media studies, that was definitely the internship. I love working on the internship. I love getting my hands dirty and seeing the basketball in action. It's all so intense and in inviting. I learned a lot about basketball, about media studies in general. And I highly recommend it. Um, I got to learn how to use my camera more often, the video setting on it. I'm more of a photographer, so I didn't really know how to use video as much. But after the last two years, I got to learn a revolve around how to use video and use it for every daily life. I use it mostly for the news, but um, I'm going to be using it for more like commercial or filmmaking in the future. We asked them to talk about their internships. On the internship, I met... I went to the studio, we gathered all the equipment from the storage room, and then we wheeled it down to the gym. We had about two hours to set everything up, so that includes robotics, hand cameras, and the two cameras in the crow's nest. We had a lot, not a lot of trouble, but a lot of difficulties in the beginning with uh, equipment failing sometimes, or just the uh, team not being able to make it because of COVID. But in the end, it turned out to be a great experience. And there's a lot of heavy lifting and a lot of uh, need to know basis and terms if you want to do good. But in the end, it's really worth it. Uh, it was pretty fantastic. With the internship, you have to really be a people person because you got to constantly interview people and you got to be, you just can't really be quiet. And that's the thing I learned that you got to really be a people person. I had a great time though. I got to meet a lot of people. I had to attend a lot of events. I got to learn how to edit better. Overall, I think it was a great experience and I can't wait to use that experience for real life. We asked them what was their favorite thing to do on campus? My favorite thing to do on campus? That's a tough one. Um, probably get to meet new people in my classes. The teachers are fun, meeting new people in and out of class has always been a great experience for me. Everyone's really friendly here. My favorite thing to do on campus was to attend events around campus. They were really fun. This week we had a Spring Fest. So I, I attended that, that Tuesday and it was really fun to go outside. It's April, so everything is really nice outside. If you are interested in contacting the graduating media students in this video, do not hesitate to contact them. Their email is displayed on the screen. Thank you for watching. GSU TV. Hi and welcome to GSU TV. Today the Student Activities Council or SAC for short hosts our March Mania 3 on 3 basketball tournament in the GSU gymnasium at 5. In order for students to participate in the tournament they would have needed to create a three person team to join. Also admission to playing games were free for GSU students but non-GS students would have to pay $5 to play.
the first couple games were exhibition games, meaning those games were warm-ups before the real games. The first couple exhibition matches were Team A and Team B. After that, Team B versus Baller Kings. Afterwards, we received a halftime performance from the GSU dance team. After the performance, we entered the actual games. We had Team A go against Baller Kings in the first round. Soon later, Team A would lose to Baller Kings, making Baller Kings go to the next round. The next games had the Baller Kings face off against Team B for the championship game. Towards the end, Baller Kings came out victorious. If you are interested in these events, please check out your school email for upcoming events. Thanks for watching. This is Alex Ray signing off for GSU TV. On Thursday, March 23rd, Aurora, Colorado dentist James Tolliver Craig stood in front of a judge and was formally charged with the murder of his wife, Angela Craig. James is accused of putting poisonous substances into his wife's protein shake that led to a fatal outcome. This was his third attempt to poison his wife in a month, according to Angela's sister. Investigators indicated in the weeks prior to the murder, James had used his computer at the dental office to conduct online searches related to arsenic, the poison found in Angela's system, as well had ordered numerous different substances that alarmed his co-workers. According to many emails found, James indicated that the substances were going to be used for an experiment. The use of arsenic and other harmful substances caused Angela to have a severe seizure and was later declared brain dead in the hospital. Throughout the next couple of weeks, new information is set to release to the public. A decision on this case will be made on the next hearing on April 7, 2023. This is Jason Gonzalez reporting for GSU TV. The Department of Justice on Wednesday, March 22, 2023, announced the largest methamphetamine bust in West Virginia history. The bust charged 30 people with allegedly distributing more than 200 pounds of meth, guns, and other drugs. This was an operation that took seven months and whose name was Operation Smoke and Mirrors. Officials seized 28 pounds of cocaine, 20 pounds of fentanyl, 18 guns, and 747,000 in cash during the operation, according to the Department of Justice. More than 50 search warrants were obtained by law enforcement to complete the multi-agency investigation. These arrests have protected the citizens of West Virginia and demonstrated the work between federal and local law enforcement. This investigation demonstrates that we will use all of our resources, including new and innovative investigative techniques, against those who target our communities with this poison. This is Jason Gonzalez reporting for GSU TV. Good afternoon, I'm Dominic Del Polo and I'm here at the Center of Performing Arts at GSU. On March 19th, Adam Sandler was awarded the Mark Twain Prize for American Humor. This prize recognizes Sandler's three decades of writing, acting, and directing. The ceremony broadcasted on CNN on March 26th. 
Here's a bit of Sandler's acceptance of the award. And all my fellow comedians, actors, writers, collaborators, crew members, people on the streets, my family, my kids, my forever girl Jackie, all make me feel like the critics didn't know what, they, what the hell they were talking about. So thank you for all that. Thank you. Countless celebrities came to support Adam Sandler. Here's a short list. Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle, Pete Davidson, David Spade, Rob Schneider, Ben Stiller, Jennifer Aniston, and of course, his wife and kids. This is Dominic Del Polo reporting for GSU News. Thanks for watching. Good afternoon, I am Miracle Strickland with GSU News reporting on the massive amount of seaweed that has taken over Florida's coastline. Sargasm, which is the natural occurrence of a variety of brown seaweed that forms together. This form that has taken over the coast is possibly the largest scientists have ever seen with a span of 5,000 miles that reaches from the shores of Africa to the Gulf of Mexico. This gathering of seaweed can pose as a hazard to human health. For those traveling to the coast this summer, there are some recommended precautions. Due to the toxic gas the seaweed produces, Florida's Department of Health suggests limited exposure, especially if you already have pre-existing respiratory problems. It is advised that children must remain supervised and you avoid contact with or being within close proximity of the seaweed until it is carefully removed by official authorities. Although this seems like it may cause a damper in your travel plans, you can rest assured that the coast will be doing everything they can to ensure that your vacation will not be negatively affected. This is Miracle Strickland with GSU News. Welcome to Sports Talk. Today we'll be covering the latest and the greatest stories from the world of sports. Let's get started. Our first story comes from America's number one pastime, baseball, where the season has begun and the Tampa Bay Rays have yet to lose a game, racking up 11 straight victories. The powerful bats of Wander Franco and Randy Rosarena has created a plus 63 run differential, the best ever for a modern team through 11 games. Play take your chances with our defense. To Rosarena, ground ball headed toward the middle, gonna skate through, base hit to center, Marco. Score. Here comes Mejia, and the Rays add two. As for the Chicago Cubs, they currently stand third in the NL Central with a record of six wins and five losses. The acquisition of Dansby Swanson has proven to be fruitful, with his 400 batting average leading the team. Pitches in very well. Power, power matchup to start, and a Robert deep to left center field. This one is back towards the bullpen and gone, and the White Sox tie things up on one swing. On the south side of Chicago, the White Sox currently stand third in the AL Central with a record of five wins and eight losses. The Sox below 500 record is attributed to the absence of stars Tim Anderson, Liam Hendricks, and Joe Kelly. The White Sox eagerly await the return of closer Liam Hendricks. His comeback would reinforce a very poor pitching rotation. With Minnesota beating LeBron in LA two games to one. On him, switching on the floor. LeBron is on cap, knocked it away, but galloping Davis at the other end. Now it's time to take a look into the world of basketball where LeBron James' 30-point and 10-rebound double-double performance led the Lakers past the Timberwolves in the play-in game. Punching a playoff appearance for the Lakers, who will be facing John Morant's Memphis Grizzlies in the first round of the 2023 NBA playoffs. Barnes to trigger. Here's Van Vliet. Got it off in time. Go! As for the Chicago Bulls, they came back from a 19-point deficit against the Toronto Raptors through a historic performance of Zach Levine, who scored 39 points in the victory. Through this victory, the Bulls have the opportunity to gain the 8th seed, but first they must take down the Miami Heat in order to reach the playoffs. This is Chainsy Gonzalez reporting for GSU TV.
Welcome to Hollywood Buzz, your source for the latest in the entertainment industry. I'm your host, Jason Gonzalez. Today we have stories from legendary music artists all the way to new announcements of films. Let's get started. Our first story comes from Grammy Award winning artist Taylor Swift and English actor Joey Alwyn, who have reportedly broken up after six years of dating. This comes at a time where Swift is traveling the country in her sold out Eros tour. This relationship began in 2017, and both individuals have kept details very private ever since the relationship was brought to light. In the six years they have been together, both celebrities have collaborated on multiple projects that have brought success to both of their careers. In other news, Los Angeles County Medical Examiner Coroner have released an autopsy finding in the death of American rapper Coolio. Nearly six months ago, the rapper was found unresponsive at his Los Angeles home. The report lists the effects of fentanyl, heroin, methamphetamine as the cause of the late artist's death at the age of 59 in September. We will destroy the Mushroom Kingdom! Bowser is coming. I'm not afraid. Now it's time to shift to the news coming from the film industry. The Super Smash Bros. movie has crushed all of their competitors at the box office, racking up $377 million in its global debut over the long Easter weekend, making it the highest grossing video game movie ever, knocking down Sonic the Hedgehog 2. There are already ongoing conversations of creating a sequel in the near future. I have some really good news for all Star Wars enthusiasts. Three more live-action Star Wars films are on their way according to Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy. These films will cover the Dawn of the Jedi. It will focus on the New Republic but closing out the interconnected stories told in The Mandalorian, The Book of Bubble Fat, Ahsoka, and other Disney Plus series. And it will follow the events of The Rise of the Skywalkers. The release date has yet to be announced for any of these films. Well, in that case, what are we drinking? Same for the goddaughter. Dad told me you found something on a train during the war. A dial that could change the course of history. Why are you chasing the thing that drove your father crazy? Don't move. We need to get out of here. Stop! Sorry. Helena! Dr. Jones, get him. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is the fifth installment of a series that has lived on for generations. The trailer represents a new adventure that is set to release on January 30th, 2023, and has a runtime of 2 hours and 22 minutes. It will be an action film you won't want to miss this upcoming summer. This is Jason Gonzalez reporting for GSU TV.